All right. Thank you very much. Well, excited to hear what this young man has to share with us today. Uh, he's been around for several years now, and he's, his heart is full, and every time we share God's Word, it's all of our life walking with God in preparation to that moment. It's not the past week looking at notes. It's the overflow of your whole life up to that moment. And we are thrilled to hear what Joey Salvo has to say to us today. Joey, would you come on up? Bless us. Well, thank you guys. It's a honor and a privilege to be before you guys today. Please take seats. Be comfortable. We're family here. Um, I was very convicted of some of the some of the uh, trials and and uh, situations that I've been in. Um, God's definitely been working on my heart, and it's it's wonderful to be in a group of people that aren't clock in Christians. My teaching's already been covered, from the manifestations to people praying. I, I feel like I have very little to say, but my heart's still overjoyed to do it. It's wonderful to see God working in all of your guys' lives to the point where it's like, man, it's, it's amazing how God works. It just really is. Um, I think uh, God's just really put it on my heart to really let it sink in that we are His image bearers. And we need to know our worthy, we are worthy of the vocation that we've been called. It doesn't matter age. It doesn't matter race. God has put dreams and visions in each and every one of you. And we need not be afraid to walk out on that. So I hope that you leave today being more convinced of who you are in Christ, uh, knowing the authority that you have and the abilities that God's given you. I hope that you walk out with a dream that's bigger in your heart and a vision that's set for your lives to conquer whatever obstacles are in your way. Because with God, we can move any obstacle out. It doesn't matter if it's a mountain. God will elevate your thinking to where it turns into a pebble. It is not like, we just need to lift our vision up. We have more power than we're recognizing right now. So, um, I think it's... Uh, I have a different version than probably what's available to you, Casey. Um, I think probably the Amplified would be close to uh, what it would be. But if, uh, if you don't want to flip around, I'll give you guys the verses, and you can look it up for yourselves. We'll do it like LeVar Burton on Reading, Reading Rainbow. <laughs> don't take my word for it. Look at it for yourself, you know? <laughs> um, I think it's, it's just amazing. I've, just, I've really been pricked in my heart. I lost a couple friends. And uh, it, it made me re reevaluate my life and my impact on people. Um, I had a couple friends that lost jobs and different stuff during this time, and they took their own lives. Um, so it, it convicted me in my heart. And... It made me thankful for what I had, but it made me view why I haven't had the hard conversations. Why, um, we're not reaching out to people that matter. In Matthew 16, um, and start in verse 24. And it says, this is Christ talking in a parable to his, his followers, his people. He's setting vision for them. 
And he says, uh, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself the things you think you want. You must pick up your cross and follow me. The person who wants to save his, his life must lose it. She who loses her life for me will find it. Look, does it make sense to truly become successful, but then to hand over your very soul? What is your soul really worth? Um, in Psalms 139, I thought this was cool. This was covered in prayer. Um, kind of sets the tone for everything. I got a picture of my niece. She's kind of sassy. She has a... Uh, She's in glasses. She's got her shades on, if you could throw that up, Casey. I, I love her uh, dearly, and whenever um, we get to video chat or FaceTime and um, look at one another and, and see each other, she's always overjoyed and bubbly and giggly and laughing. But um, in uh, Psalms 139... 14 through 18. Um, and this, like I said, is, it's in the voice, the voice translation. But uh, it says, I will offer you my grateful heart, for I am your unique creation, filled with wonder and awe. You have approached even the smallest detail with excellence. Your works are wonderful. I will carry this knowledge deep within my soul. You see all things. Nothing about me was hidden from you. As I took shape in secret, carefully crafted in the heart of the earth before I was born from its womb. You see all things. You saw me growing, changing in my mother's womb. Every detail of my life was already written in your book. You established the length of my life before I ever tasted the sweetness of it. Your thoughts and plans are treasures to me, O oh God. I cherish each and every one of them. How grand in scope, how many in number. If I could count each one of them, they would be more than all the grains of sand on earth. Their number is inconceivable. Even when I wake up, I am still near, near to you. And that's, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see that. Like God's predestined all this stuff. Christ didn't die for us to be mediocre or average. He took all the risk, not knowing what the outcome was. God set a mission before him, and he's like, hey. It showed his humanness, because he's like, God, hey, if you can let this, uh, if we can kind of reroute this a little bit, if this cup can pass from me, I'd really enjoy that. It looks like this is not going to be a real easy path to take. This is a big burden that's on my shoulders right now. I've read it. It's one thing to see it in Scripture. It's one thing to be about my father's business. But looking at this, this is a big cup. So if we can reroute, you know, that'd be kind of cool. No? Okay. <laughs> the next thing I feel that he said was, give me the strength to endure it. Give me the strength to overcome this obstacle. So we're, you know, some of us are still worrying about the risk. Man, I don't know if I have what it takes to be successful I'm scared that I might fall, fall on my face and fall flat and not succeed at these things. I don't know what the outcome is. I've, I've, planned, I've planned everything. I've put all my ducks in a row. I don't know if it's enough. Jesus died so that it was enough. And we just need to be convinced of it. We have to let that sink down in our heart and be the resounding voice more than other people's. Man's opinion will always be there. But God is greater than that. We can overcome that. So to deny yourself is not giving up of the things, you know. We have avenues to reach people. Some of us are doctors, some of us are lawyers, some of us are construction workers, and there's always these little avenues and intricacies. We all have giftings that bring us together. It, sol it can help us to solve each and every one of the problems that arise in our lives. I am no stronger, no better by the, the life path that I've chosen or the education that I have. Those are all man-made. They're corruptible. 
I can't take my PhD or whatever I have or my certifications, you know, certifications and all this stuff. It, it goes to the grave. That dies off. The incorruptible seed doesn't. That's always there. So who are you? And how big's your God? So I just, uh, I really, I've seen that more and more. It's not the giving up of your, you know, giving up of things and all these accolades that we have. That's all me, 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 me. It's turning your life over wholly to Christ. It's saying that those things are dung. I don't count them above everything else that you've accomplished. I'm turning my life over for relationship. I want to know you. I want to reach people and be able to turn their lives around for better. Because all this is meaningless if we don't love one another. I mean, God didn't need us. God didn't need us. I mean, He's God. He spoke light. He spoke light and it was there. He wants to bring heaven down for us. He wanted family. He wanted unity. And through our own selfish devices, we categorize all these different things to separate us, whether it's your football team or where you come from nationally or what your race is. It's crap. And I've had my fill of it. So it's just, I mean, you just got to, you got to have fire in the tank. You got to have, you got to have something to give because the world's opinion and all these things that separate us, there's the voice of negativity that will always be in your ear. You set the tone, you are the light where you go. Like we carry the torch for God. We are his hands, we are his feet, we are the image bearers of what he is because people would not know that without us. So are we convinced? Do we know our Father? Are we acting as if we have the power of Christ? Because we already do. I mean, I want to claim up real estate. I want to have my place in the kingdom. I want to have equity in it. You know? Give me some sweet equity. I want my cabin. I want my place in the kingdom. You know? I may, I may not want neighbors all the time. That's why I said a cabin, so... <laughs> You know, if I, want, if I want to be silent with God, I'll, I'll have it. I'm not a city boy. Sorry. So picking up our cross isn't giving. It's not. We can't look at it as giving up. You know, it's bettering our life. It's giving ourselves wholly and completely. To take up our cross is not, you know, it has nothing to do with your daily burdens or depression or different things that you feel, anxiety, you know, it's, it's not about that. It's finding our end so that we can find the start of God. We can find where Jesus begins, where he has influence and instruction in our lives, because he wants to establish that relationship with us. He longs for it. He craves it more than we do. He wants the success in your life more than you want it. And we're so short-sighted. You really think that it's your, your boss's paycheck that he signs down there that gives you the deliverance in your life? I mean, I love Schumacher to death. He's a great dude. His wife brings Gatorade for us when it's hot. That's awesome. But it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> quench the thirst in my life. It doesn't give me daily joy. Those are means to an end. But God's love, His mercy, His giftings, are without end. If you tap into that kingdom, you realize that you know, you're doing a job. You have influence that's in there. That's what you, Your path is specifically chosen, but when you clock out of that, it's God time. It's your time. Invest in yourself. Believe in yourself. Know who you are. It's something that's great and powerful. It's not something that's, you know, we are not wimpy Christians. We're not clock-in Christians. We don't have a nine to five God. He is there whether or not, whether or not you want him around even. I couldn't get rid of God. And get, trust me, I tried. My mom can attest to it. Uh, your hair's beautiful, mom, but I've accounted for all of those hairs that are on her head. She spent many a nights worrying about me because I was the rough and wild child. I was an outlaw for sure. So. We don't test God, but I mean, I, I probably came, you know, uh, within his wrath, within his anger. He's like, hey, Joe, you know, you're really kind of pressing the line here, bud. You know, there's grace, but uh, yeah. 
And it's funny, my mom would wake up at the middle of the night, there's gunshots going off in the background, and we're having a fight at the club, and she's like, I just, I knew that you were in trouble. I said, Ma, I can't really talk right now. <laughs> kind of busy, we're in the middle of this rough stuff here. But thank you for your prayers, love you. Uh, yeah. I had a very colorful background, but I love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world because it taught me the differences that we have. You know, it taught me love for many different, you know, different backgrounds, to respect other people, to learn from, from every kind of culture, you know, to embrace their beautiful food that they have, you know? Like, it's just, it's, it's awesome. When you break bread and you fellowship with people and there's really true full sharing, when you're confident in who you are in Christ, you can walk into any crowd and change that room. I don't care if you have knowledge. If you, you know, you grew up in a white community, you can go in, in, into anywhere. You can be convinced of the God and Christ in you. We can have an impact wherever we go. It's not just limited to our knowledge. So, I'm not fired up at all. <laughs> I just, uh, man, if we were convinced of who we were in Christ, if we were only convinced the change that we would make happen, the world waxes worse and worse as it turns. You know what? It makes it easier and easier for us to shine. But are we looking at it as an opportunity? Or are we looking at it as like something, just a challenge that we have to daily come? It's not a chore to do God's workings. I'm thankful to be about my Father's business. I look for those opportunities. I look for those deep and meaningful conversations because I'm tired of the surface crap. I don't have place for it in my life anymore. I don't have place for anchors in my life. I need people that are sales, people that are willing to go and move where God moves, where he puts the winds, they are ready to go. God has equipped us. And we sit there in a boat, and we think we're sitting there with oars, but we're really like, we're pouring water in our own boat, you know? And then we're blaming everybody and every occurrence around us for what's happening. And God, you know, he's wonderful. I love... When, when uh, Jesus is sitting there and saying, get out the boat. I mean, it, how, what trust? What trust? It only takes the smallest of believing to make miracles happen. You are all walking miracles in here. God breathed his life into you. You know, there are so many occurrences that, that you would not even be here in this room. Do you not count yourself as worthy I mean, if your mother had dated Tom across the street or, you know, the other guy, you, you might not be here today. Like, there's so many different avenues and so many different, you know, variables to this to where you would not even exist. You don't think you're planned? Even if your parents did it and they're, whoa, hey, we got a little shocker here. We weren't really trying yet, but we're thankful for this, you know, going on. You were planned by God. Throw up Hazel again. I just love seeing her little face. The little shades. I think there's one with uh, Hudson and Hazel there. I just think it's so sweet because this is, this is what God sees us as. We are his kids. You don't think that there's nothing he wouldn't do to bring joy into our lives, to bring prosperity. The reason kids are so beautiful is they're not corrupted by the world yet. The only thing that they know is love. God's direction, his guidance, and everything that he wants for us. There's nothing I wouldn't do for those two. I got bail money set aside for when, she, when Hazel starts dating. I am, I am prepared. I am prepared. Ugh. So, we're, we're anointed. We are anointed. He's made a plan for us before, before we were knit and made in our mother's womb. He's got something for us. He had a plan for us because we got something to give. You exist for His glory. It's something that's amazing. It's something we can cherish and dwell in. Um, there's really nothing that we can't overcome. We're awesome and wonderfully made in Psalms 139. In I Isaiah 61, 1 through 6. Uh, he's anointed us. The Spirit of the Lord, the Eternal, is on me. The Lord has appointed me for a special purpose. 
He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to repair the broken hearts and to declare those who are held captive and bound in prison. And that's not just physical bars. There's a lot of us that are imprisoned and held back by our own minds. And we've got to help each other unlock that. God wants success. He wants prosperity in our lives. So we really need to dig between our ears and see what it is that's holding us back because we're in mental bondage. You know, we take too much for granted. God's written the key to success. We've got to tap into kingdom and stop looking at earthly stuff. We've got to stop, you know, gleaning from the table scraps that our bosses give us. He's given us more. You can't tap out God. I mean, he's just given it, he's given it all to us. Uh, and to declare those who are held captive and bound in prison, be free from your imprisonment. He has sent me to announce the year of Jubilee, the season of the eternal's favor. For our enemies, it will be the day of God's wrath. For those who mourn, it will be a time of comfort. And for those who grieve over Zion, God has sent me to give them a beautiful crown in exchange for ashes, to anoint them with gladness instead of sorrow, to wrap them in victory, joy, and praise instead of depression and sadness. People will call them magnificent, like great towering trees, standing for what is right. They stand to the glory of the Eternal who planted them. How deep do your roots want to be, man? You can be a mighty oak, or you can just be, you know, a little sapling. God will pour it on. You've got to prepare the crops, though. You've got to prepare the fields. God's willing to let it rain. And we don't want it. It's as simple as that. If He's given us the rhyme and the reason for success, why would we deny that to Him? By not allowing Him to have access into our lives. Why are we too prideful to reach out and say, I'm struggling, man. Right now I don't see it. I don't see God's plan. I don't hear His voice. It is muted to me. And I can't, I can't conceive. That does not make me a weak man. It is reaching out to strength to say, I have found my end. God, you pick up where I left off. We've got to stop letting pride get the best of us. Our purpose. We're anointed. Uh, in Matthew 25. Uh, and 34 through 40. Then, then the king will say to those to his right, Come here, you beloved, you people whom my father has blessed. Claim your inheritance. The kingdom, the kingdom prepared for, for you from the beginning of creation. You shall be richly rewarded. For when I was hungry, you fed me. And when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was alone as a stranger, and you welcomed me into your homes and into your lives. I was naked, and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick, and you tended to my needs. I was in prison, and you comforted me. Even then, the righteous will, will not have achieved perfection, understanding, and will not recall these things. Sometimes we forget real quick, you know. Um, his people questioned him and said, Master, uh, and so I guess it's picking up in the end of 37. Master, when did we find you hungry and give you food? When do we find you thirsty and slake your thirst? When do we find you a stranger and welcome you in or find you naked and clothe you? When do we find you sick and nurse you to health? When did we visit you when you were in prison? And in 40 he says, I tell you this, whenever you saw a brother or sister you're hungry or cold, whatever you did to the least of these, so you did to me. Are we looking for opportunities? Are we too busy in our lives to seek these people out? Because God wants them found. 
They're treasures that need to be unearthed. There's gold amongst us that's not being tapped into. You know, we have a great and mighty God. Jesus is a gentleman. He doesn't force his way or batter down the doors. He has to be welcomed in. All we need to do is extend an invitation, and he will completely wreck your life in the worst way. Because then your goals are an avenue to serve him. You don't start looking at your job and saying, oh, this is a chore, I just can't wait till I get out. You know, the people around you, their voice isn't an annoyance anymore. You hear them as cries of help. You seek those things out and they're a pleasure to address. Because you've changed. Your time is well spent. You're, you look at your life in a new and, and wonderful way. You start seeing the creation that he's made. You start seeing the power that's back behind that. It's no longer a chore. It's a gift that he's given you. And God is endless in his giftings. You know, it's not just one set. We're not just ministers or teachers or preachers. You can sharpen every tool in the shed. Don't let people think or try to limit you or say, uh, you're only one. That's not what my Bible says. You guys are, are great and magnificent. You're not on the clock. There's no you know, expiration date. We might have a time that Jesus, you know, until Jesus Christ comes back, but you know what? There's some of us that aren't even a taste death before that. We get to see the whole thing happen. You know? It's, it's, an, amazing, it's an amazing thing that's going to come about if we only look for the opportunities. So the least of these... It, nobody's less than us. We are no better in our situation. We need to have hu humility in our hearts. I am always coachable. I will learn from the smallest person to the oldest one in the room, but we need to glean from their wisdom. This front row, we got some wisdom in this room. They've lived some life. Glean from it. We have people in the church that are pillars. Why are we not spending time or having lunch? Because it's not the cool crowd? Because it's not a person that you'd hang out in the bar with? Share a beer? You know what? My whole, my whole reason for even coming, coming to the was not even planned. This was God's direction for my life. And I know that. I was set up for Tennessee. I had the big boy job. I had bucks that were guaranteed. I had the house that was there. All I needed to do was drive. But I had a close friend of mine, Brent Joseph, that told me about this place. And God said, your time isn't done here. I said, man, those winters are kind of hard. Tennessee would be nice. They don't even have salt trucks. And God, God said to get busy. There is a lot of potential here. Let's not let it die off at that. Let's glean from one another. Use it to strengthen one another. Uh, in Romans 12, see in verse 9, love others well and don't hide behind a mask. I think that speaks to these times. And we don't want to let, because we have to physically muzzle ourselves, you know, don't let it spiritually muzzle ourselves. You know, we don't want to walk blindly. There's, there's the, the ways of man and then there's the ways of the Lord that are higher than that. We can take precautions, but we don't got to be safe with God. You know, full throttle. I got no fear when it comes to him. He's shown me time and time again. I've tapped in. I'm thankful for my mother because she wakes up with some strong coffee and some strong Bible, and she showed me that habit. Whenever pressure kicked in, that Bible was open and cracked. Before the sun came up, I'd wake, I mean, I woke up even this last, last weekend. I was kicked out of my own house because there was a bachelorette party happening. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. it was, we got the heads up, but I knew it, it's not a safe zone. 
there is joy, there is joy <laughs> that is happening there that you don't want to be a part of. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's amazing. Like this whole walk, the people that I've shared my life with and, and lived with, you know, it was a challenge. I didn't know if I was going to connect with these people that were younger than me. They watch Japanimation and stuff. I'm like, that's not my, it's not my cup of tea. You know? I was like, nerd alert, I'm trying, I'm trying, Lord. I was like, I'm trying. I'm trying to like gather and make a connection, but I'm like, man, all I know is like football. And I was like, I'm limited, Lord. I need other avenues to be able to connect with these people. And he made a way. Like their family is awesome and amazing. And I see where Sienna gets her spitfire from. Her dad and mom are amazing people. They got great hearts for God. Great hearts. And Mike, I see, I see your background too. I see how big your heart is and where it came from. It's, it's wonderful to see people's roots. When they're vulnerable enough to be exposed and open and raw, that's when we get, that's when we get what we really need. Have not because you ask not. Door's not open because you weren't willing to knock, bud. God's real. He's got a set standard. He made it very simple for us because He knows we're dirt. He knows our makeup. You don't give a whole lot of rules to dirt, do you? I mean, He kept it real simple for us. All we got to do is follow. It's just that simple. I mean, He praises us for making the right decisions. So He's like, no, no, no. I can't do anything for you when you go down that way. So you got to come back and ask for it. And then when you come back and ask for it, I'm going to give you blessings on blessings on blessings. I like that life. Getting praised and getting blessings from God for doing the right thing, just making a simple choice that I was too stupid to not make the first time. I mean, there's a lot of grace in that. So we want to love well. Don't hide behind a mask. Love authentically. Despise evil. Pursue what is good as if your life depended on it. Because it does. We can't lose faith. We can lose our lives. But guess what? I'd rather go out swinging and overextending myself for God than being too, you know, wishy washy on Scripture, but being too afraid to walk out for God. I'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. Sorry I went there, Lord. Sorry I went overboard. (laughs) Life is true devotion to one another, loving each other as sisters and brothers. Be first to honor others by putting them first. Do not slack in your faithfulness and hard work. Let your spirit be on fire, bubbling over and boiling over as you serve the Lord. Do not forget to rejoice For hope is always just around the corner. Hold up through the hard times that are coming and devote yourselves to prayer. Share what you have with the saints so they lack nothing. Take every opportunity to open your life and home to others. If people mistreat or malign you, bless them. Always speak blessings, not cursings. If some have cause to celebrate, join in the celebration. We just had that opportunity yesterday, and it was real sweet. And if others are weeping, join in that as well. Work towards unity and live in harmony with one another. Avoid thinking you are better than others or wiser than the rest. Instead, embrace common people and ordinary tasks. Do not retaliate with evil, regardless of the evil brought against you. Try to do what is good and right and honorable as agreed upon by all people. If it is within your power to make peace with all people, again, my loved ones, do not seek revenge. Instead, allow God's wrath to make sure justice is served. Turn it over to Him. For the Scriptures say, revenge is mine. I will settle all scores. It's not our place. It isn't our burden to bear. But consider it a bit of wisdom. If your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Because if you treat him kindly, it will be like a heaping hot coal on top of his head. Never let evil get the best of you. Instead, 
overpower evil with good. James 1.27 says that we're to be doers and not just hearers of the word. That was covered in prayer too. Um, in James 1, verse 2, it says don't run from trials. We're going to face tough times. It was an easy pill for me to swallow the losing of my friends that I held dear or that they didn't have the courage to reach out or that they were too prideful or that they were in too much trouble that they were over their head. You know, it's just... Life is not always rainbows and butterflies. Being a Christian is real. We have trials, we have opportunities, we have situations that come up and smack us in the mouth that we didn't have a plan for. So what do you got in the tank? What have you put in your system to convince yourself to get through those times. If you got nothing, you're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to be overtaken. Good thing we got a household. You can throw out a lifeline to any of these people in this room. The problem is we don't. You know, God's given us a great wealth of knowledge, great hearts, great abilities. But if we don't throw it out, if we don't throw that lifeline out, we will never get the answer that we're seeking. We will never know or tap into our true potential or know what God had planned for us if we just seek our own way. Our own way is selfish. Doing His works is selfless. It is living for others. Jesus Christ in all of His life was not for Him. It was not for His glory. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. He knew He was the shepherd of the flock, but His power and His recharge was from the Almighty God. And we gotta, we got to realize that. It's something that's amazing. God wants relationship over any religiousness, over any, any kind of thing that could ever hold us back. Have those tough conversations with Him. Lord, my day's crap. I really am not in a good mood today. I really would like to take somebody out because it would make me feel better to just jaw jack somebody. You know, give me, yeah, I wish, I wish a person would. Please cut me off in traffic. I will gladly follow you and give you a piece of my mind and a piece of my boot as well. You know, I've had those moments. But God can cause peace in all of it. He can go beyond our understanding. We don't know where people are coming from or what they're facing. Meet them with grace. Try to be thoughtful. Because I guarantee you that person, you know, it might be a lifelong friend that you make. If you, turn, if you turn the narrative, if you seek God before you seek your own anger or try, you know, try to solve your own and settle your own score. <coughs> Isaiah 35. If we got this in the amp, Casey, could you throw that up? Uh, in Isaiah 35, we'll read 1 through 10. <clears throat> Imagine the wilderness whooping for joy, the desert's unbridled happiness with this... Okay, I'm not reading from the amp. Um, the wilderness and the dry lands will be glad. The desert will shout... And exultation and blossom like the autumn crocus. Uh, it will blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the majesty of Mount Carmel and the plain of Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the majesty and the splendor of our God. Encourage, and encourage the exhausted and make staggering knees firm. Say to those with an anxious and panicking heart, panic-stricken heart, be strong, fear not. Indeed, your God will come with vengeance for the ungodly. The, retribu the retribution of God will come, but he will save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute will shout for joy. For waters will break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. 
and the burning sand, the mirage, will become a pool of water, and the thirsty ground springs of water, and the haunt of jackals where they lay resting, grass becomes reeds and rushes. A highway will be there, and a roadway, and it will be called the holy way. The unclean will not travel on it, but it will be for those who walk on the way, the redeemed. And fools will not wander on it. No lion will be there, nor will any predatory animal come up on it. They will not be found there, but the redeemed will walk here. And the ransomed of the Lord will return and come to Zion with shouts of jubilation and everlasting joy will be upon their heads. They will find joy and gladness. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. And I'll read uh, from Romans 15 in the voice. So now what? We who are strong are not just to satisfy our own desires. We are called to carry the weaknesses of those who are not strong. Each of us must strive to please our neighbors, pursuing their welfare so they will become strong. The Anointed One Himself is our model for this kind of living. He did not live to please Himself, and as the Scriptures declared, when they insult you, they insult me. You see, everything written in the days of old was recorded to give us instructions for living. We find encouragement through the Scriptures and a call to perseverance. That will produce hopeful, hopeful living. I pray that our God who calls you and gives you perseverance and encouragement, will join all of you together to share one mind according to Jesus the Anointed. In this unity, you will share one voice as you glorify the one true God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, our liberating King. So accept one another. In the same way, the Anointed has accepted you, so that God will get the praise He is due. For as I am fond of saying, the Anointed One has become a servant of the Jews. In order to demonstrate God's truth effectively, this confirms the promises He made to our ancestors and has caused the non-Jewish nations to glorify God for His mercy. As the Scriptures say, For this I will praise you among the nations. I sing praises to your name. Again, the Scriptures say, Nations celebrate with the covenant people. And again, Praise the Lord, all nations. Raise your voices, all people. Let your praise flow to God. Again again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will emerge. He He rises to rule, and the people of the world, who come to him for guidance and direction, in him they place their hope. I pray the God, the source of all hope, will infuse your lives with an abundance of joy and peace in the midst of your faith, so that you, your hope will overflow through the power of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, I am ultimately confident that you are full of goodness, knowledge, and the ability to help and instruct one another. I have written to you with unflinching honesty on many topics, because I do not want you to ever lose sight of the tremendous grace God has given me. His grace makes me who I am, a minister, the anointed one, Jesus called to serve the nations. There's several things that I had, I I struggled with my identity when I was younger. I sought it out in all the wrong places. I looked for quick accesses to power and influence because my roots were not grounded in who I really was. When you're convinced, when you know who you are in Christ, there is nothing that defeats you. You don't live a life in depression. You don't live a life in anxiety. These things don't stop you. And uh, my parents gave me a great name to live up to, and I'm now convinced of it. Um, Joseph comes from the Latin form of the Greek Iosef, from Hebrew name Yosef, meaning he will add in Yasaf, which is give increase. David is beloved, also known as uncle, 
which is why people just think they recognize me for no reason, and they think I'm the lost uncle of their family. <laughs> so I'm welcome pretty much anywhere. It's kind of sweet. And salvo is a military term, but it's also used, it means many rounds. Uh, so I'm not going to be defeated. That's what it's taken me to convince myself. I know that I will live up to my name, and I'm convinced of it. And I will bring those things to this church. And you guys have the ability to do the same. Outpour, you know? Don't let cries go unnoticed. Be there for one another and strengthen and there's a, a little poem that was on a door, Casey. Or like a, it was like a little uh, statement that was up there. I'm building a house where the floor is made up of strength, where the walls are crafted of ambition, where the roof, roof is a masterpiece of forgiveness. I am building myself. You know, God... God wants to be in our lives. When we put Him as the center, we have a strong home. We are the church, and we bring that fire wherever we go. But it's wonderful when we get to dwell amongst each other. So glean from that. Know yourself. Know the power that's in you. And be convicted in your hearts that nothing can stop you. Reach out. Love one another well. Thank you. Such a great word. Yep. Our identity in Christ, our plan, our purpose. We are anointed and launched into mission. That's exciting. Thanks, Joey. Thanks also for the live streamers who are out there. Didn't mention them before, but God bless you, live streamers. Yoo-hoo, we love you.